morning everyone uh, at least in my case morning um it's an early 7 30 on a sunday here and uh yeah well i don't know about you but i'm ready to get our sixth uh octoprint on air broadcast started right now so um Maybe first uh, some words to how we're going to do that this time. Um, basically the same like like always. Um, and I managed to talk to myself here. Sorry for that. Um, we uh, first of all, of course, there's a live chat as always. It should be uh, if you're watching this on the YouTube page at this location about here right now you can also pop that out into a different window um on mobile it would be somewhere in the in the uh in the bottom of the video page um what we're gonna do today is basically the same as always i'll first tell you a bit about what i have been up to the past couple of weeks busily working on octoprint of course but a bit more detail than that um what my next steps are going to be with regards to uh, moving the project forward then we'll have a q a section and thankfully this time we have uh, uh, a, a huge amount of, of questions prepared in advance so apparently switching to the spreadsheet uh, based approach for the patrons for, for asking the questions was a good idea i guess and uh, finally i'll ha have some words on how we'll continue next time and and, and all that Okay, so uh, what I've been up to. Um, I think it should have been pretty obvious by now that I've been working my ass off on Octoprint 1.3.0 again. Uh, and uh, I pushed out two release candidates in the time since we last saw each other. Um, the news one, I think just the day before yesterday, right? On um, No, the day before. Yesterday, yesterday, anyhow, on, on Thursday. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, that one contained quite a number of bug fixes compared to the first one that I pushed a couple of a weeks ago and uh, also a couple of improvements and something that I uh, that that goes a bit against my promise not to push any new features into 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 release candidates. But those are th th those were things that I really, really, really wanted to have in 1.3.0. Um, uh, yeah, I also added a couple of nice features. So one of them is that Octoprint, when you click the pause button or you click the cancel button, will now not just stop doing everything, but will um, first send an, a, a basically a command to the printer that tells it to, to, to wait until uh, all moves currently in the buffer have finished and then record the position of the, of the printhead and persist this internally so that you can use it in uh, pause and resume G code in order to not have the printhead sit on that on that location where you paused uh, the print and ooze out filament on your print and all that in the meantime but would but but with that feature you are basically now able to move the printhead after you pause it move the printhead out to a resting position where nothing can um uh, can can do, cause problems with your prints and then when you click resume you can also have octoprint move the nozzle back to the position with the current feed rate with the current tool selected uh, hopefully i'm going to come to the downsides of this in a bit and um, also without having to worry about uh, about having to sync up the extruded filament and all that after a filament change and all that so octoprint will basically do a snapshot of the of the printing state of the printer state at the time of the pausing or the cancelling, and um, then do its best, depending on how you structure your resume code, um, to rewind to that position. So, why is this not out of the box included? Um, because it isn't. You need to adjust your pause and resume G code for now. The thing is that the information that I get back from the firmware sadly is a bit incomplete. So what I get back from the firmware is the current X, Y and Z location of the printhead plus the, uh, the, the yeah, basically the current E value. So the amount of extruded um, filament for the currently select tool. What I do not get back is which tool is selected 
and uh, what the current feed rate feed rate was that that was selected before pausing because the feed rate is something that you do not send with so basically the speed of the printhead is not something that you send with every command but you send it and then any command after that unless it sets a new one um, will uh, utilize that feed rate and I don't get that info out of the firmware. The firmware has that info because it uses it, but uh, it does not. It does not give it back to me. Uh, at least not with with current, um, yeah, with current firmware versions. So the problem now is that I can track that, of course, for every command that I send through Octoprint. I can just see if there was a, a feed rate uh, information included, and then just persist that internally. But if you're printing from SD. Or, uh, yeah, if you're printing from SD, then the printer will do all that on its own and I will have no way to, to get this data. Um, so you, you basically, when you print from SD, you basically have the printer do all the commands that are in the file and Octoprint doesn't know anything about those commands and never sees them. So um, I cannot track the, firm, uh, the feed rate in that case. And also, as I mentioned, um, the, the firmware will also not give me back which tool you had currently selected when you hit pause. So again, I can track that, but the problem is that while I can track that, I cannot track this 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 number of, of this, this E number, this E value for all of your selected tools. Um, or rather I could, but the firmware does not only give me give me the one E value back for, for, for your currently selected tool. So if, for example, you, you, you print with your first extruder and then I do this, this please give me the information thing, then the firmware will tell me how much filament you already extruded from your first extruder. But um, if you also printed stuff with your second extruder, I cannot get access to, to the, yeah, to, to this number, to this absolute value, how, how much you printed with that. I could, of course, for every single of your extruders, query the firmware repeatedly, like um, first query one, say say one time, where are you now? Then switch to the next extruder, where are you now? Switch to the next extruder, where are you now? The problem though is, of course, that how you need multiple commands by that to, to get um, the data you need. And um, yeah, I, I wasn't so sure yet if this is the best approach because, of course, the longer I have to query data from the firm and I cannot move the printhead in this period of time, um, the longer it still sits on this point and, and waits uh, instead of, if you have that in your pause G code, moving it out of the way. This is a bit ugly. I'm not sure yet how to solve this in the long run. And anyhow, because there are these limitations, so basically if you are SD printing or if you have multiple extruders, that the position tracking can be off because I can only try to track everything. I, I, it's, it's not that great and that, co that consistent when it doesn't come back from the firmware. Um, then uh, uh, because of that, I, I don't want yet to have this as, a, as an always enabled a feature in there that it actually always will move to a rest position and then try to find everything back, uh, try, try to find all the parameters it needs to roll everything back to the um, to the pause situation. But um, in the release notes for 130RC2, and I will also probably write that into the final announcement post for the stable version, I even might do a, a short a short blog post or even a video on, on how to use that and demonstrate it maybe. I'm, I'm not sure, completely sure yet. I don't want to promise uh, too much, but um, I will I will explain how to do that. I also provided examples how I did it and it's working fine for me because I only have a single extruder here and I rarely these days print from SD. And in that case, that stuff works perfectly. Like like you pause and, and it persists the position, it moves out, then I don't know how many minutes later and multiple filament changes if necessary or what or whatnot. It moves back to the exact X, Y, Z and E no matter how and where you moved or extruded or retracted or whatever. Um, you the printhead. It, it's it's nice. It's fine. It's, it's something I've been meaning to to have an Octoprint for quite a while because the current approach with just stopping to do anything and just hoping that stuff would realign once you clicked resume if the user did stuff in between that it was not really nice and not really good yeah um 
short in interruption from the live chat where I just was asked what printer this is in the background. That's a uh, BQ Hephaestus 2. And uh, I modified it a bit, added in a, a, a self-designed filament spool holder because the one included was a bit loud and uh, also a camera attachment and a couple of other things. So basically everything that is orange on there uh, yay! <laughs> printers for for uh, using printers for for making them better is is I think one of the nicest things about three D printing. Um, okay, back to one three zero. Another thing that I added in this version, uh, in this one three zero RC two, which I I've been meaning also to do for a very very long time because it's been causing a much of grief is. Uh, Octoprint will now try to automatically detect what firmware you are running. And the reason for that is that Repetier firmware requires a couple of, of settings, spe specific flags basically, and uh, RepRep firmware needs at least one, two, um, to, to properly work because it's just that it's just so little different from, from, from Marlin Smoothie and so on in behavior that it's nothing that I can compensate for automatically. Uh, so, you, so, so so far you need it if you had uh, had a printer running Repetier firmware or RepRep firmware, you had to go into settings, features, and check a couple of checkboxes which were marked with Repetier or RepRep firmware. Um, and uh, a lot of new users naturally didn't know that and were running into problems with, uh, for example, if they started a print, and um, the print would start heating up and in this in this kind of blocking heat up um, then it 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 would basically stall due to the difference in the communication and the octoprint not being able to properly detect that difference and this flag not being set not being able to to work around this issue um, so what what now will happen is that after you connect to the printer octoprint first thing will send an M115 that will hopefully return some meaningful information about the firmware that is running on that printer and if, if in, in this string that gets returned or rather in the firmware name parameter of this whole string after it's been parsed, uh, if, if there is either a Repetier case insensitive or rep, uh, rep, rep firmware uh, insensi uh, case insensitive as well uh, contained therein, then it will automatically switch on all those flags that are necessary for that. And you can also override this if for whatever reason it doesn't work for you, you can just roll back to the old behavior and select whatever um, flag you need or want to use for your um, uh, by, by yourself. But uh, the default uh, approach is now that it will do this firmware auto detection and uh, will hopefully um, help a lot of, of, of new users to directly get good results without having to seek help for, for issues that are a bit uh, obscure because it's a bit tricky to automatically know that you need to set, check this stuff. So um, also one thing be which, which basically grew out of uh, repeated support requests uh, for which turned out to then be caused by plugins, third party plugins of any kind is that I added a safe mode flag to Octoprint. So, that it's now easy for users or easier for users to fire up Octoprint in a, in a setup where only the bundle plugins are active. So only the stuff that is that comes right with Octoprint when you install it will be on there. And uh, this uh, should hopefully make it easier to quickly check if an issue might have might be might be uh, caused by an installed plugin without having to manually disable all uh, additional third party plugins be because this I, I understand that this is a bit too much to ask in most situations. I don't know about you, but even on on my rather vanilla uh, setups, I run at least two or three third party plugins by now uh, or yeah, and having to disable all if every single one of those that you probably run just because you you had a bug to report and you are not sure if it's caused by one of the plugins or not is uh, yeah not not the best user experience so 
Now there is the save mode flag currently, you cannot switch it from the UI. You will need uh, command line and, uh, access to that, so SSH or something like that. I'm going to change that too for now though, for 130, let's just leave it at having that flag and being able to guide users to through also another feature I added, a new little command line interface to modify the config uh, file. Um, basically, they will just have to enter one command and then um, stuff will be arranged so that next time they start the server, the save mode will be active and next time after that they restart the server, the save mode will be deactivated again. So this is something that I hope will make yeah, bug analysis and uh, also giving support to new users and old users <laughs> and uh, everyone basically much easier to, to, to faster find the culprit of, of stuff going wrong. And also if you, man if you installed something that completely uh, destroyed basically your Octoprint installation, you, you also now have a way to just um, start up Octoprint in safe mode, disable or uh, no, no, not disable, but uninstall the, the, the faulty plugin, which is possible. You can still uninstall the plugins that are in there. You just cannot install new ones or enable not uh, bundled ones. Um, yeah, so so that's this is now possible and I, I hope it will help. I mean, it's not something fancy and not no, no flashy new feature, but I hope it really will help in, uh, in, in general. Um, maintenance and long time use. So, yeah, this is uh, this were where the four four big new things that I uh, added in 130 RC2. Even though I said I did not want to add new features to release candidates anymore, but um, 130 is an, is a, is a huge release, and uh, I, I couldn't resist. Um, and I hope that. This is the last release candidate that we'll need of 130. So, um, so far, I have not gotten any blocking issues uh, reported back with this release. There's one thing that I have to investigate with a bug I fixed, which uh, a user is reporting as not having been fixed, but this is not, not something that crucial that I would like to hold the release back just to iron that out and have another release candidate in the cycle for a couple of weeks. So, um, my current goal is, and don't nail me down on it, because again, if something horrible happens, I will take care of that and throw all my plans out of the water. But for now, my goal is to be able to release 130 stable uh, within the next two weeks. So I really want to get this out before, uh, yeah, before the holidays, basically, uh, not just because to to basically have it have it done this year, um, but uh, also because I anticipate quite a number of people will get a new printer um, for Christmas. And uh, so either I get it out a couple of weeks before Christmas, so in two weeks should be still fine because then we have issues that then we can still iron them out until the holidays. Or if that doesn't work out, I'll have to do it after Christmas. And dropping a big, huge new release on someone with a new printer, hmm, I'm a bit scared about that. So let's see. Um, anyhow, yeah, so the plan is to release that in the coming, uh, in the coming, not in the coming next two weeks, something like that. And uh, with a little buffer period before Christmas. And let's hope we don't need that buffer period. And I really hope that uh, we'll be able to release 130 after two release candidates and won't need another one either. I really need to get this out. <laughs> Um, what you also, I hope, saw is that um, I released another release candidate for uh, the next 1.2 release. And you might be wondering if, you, if she's thinking about putting out 1.3.0 within the next two weeks. Why on earth did she pull out uh, a 1.2.18 RC1? And uh, the reason for this is simply uh, I, I am not completely sure that I'll be able to push out 130. Um, I hope it, as I said, but I cannot be 100% certain on that. And um, there are a couple of bug fixes that are now in are now what basically differentiates 1218RC1 from 1217, which um, I would like to get out 
to you sooner rather than later because there were some things i mean n nothing completely oh my god my printer went up in flames uh, kind of uh, stuff but still things that i would like to see fixed so um the the plan with 1 to 18 uh, is that uh, if un unless of course like usual unless there is anything reported with that that causes big big problems and so far i have not heard anything negative or positive for that matter so um, i'm assuming it works <laughs> um uh, unless anything is report it back for that i will release it within the next week so I'm, I'm targeting something like tuesday or wednesday hopefully and um yeah so that would basically give us one to 18 a stable one as as sometime during the next week and then in the first week or two of uh, of december we'll hopefully then see 130 um okay so once all that stuff is released um yeah so i will the first thing i will probably do is take a small holiday break after i'm sure that everything is working fine um and i hope you understand that but after that um yeah i i mentioned it already last time so what what really needs to be done before i can can start working on what will be 140 is um is is making some some desperate spring cleaning even though it's winter in the in the back tracker because we have so many feature requests in there with with loads of them probably already implemented or solved by some plugin or whatnot and um that stuff definitely needs to see some cleanup so what i will do is basically go through all those things that are currently marked as feature requests or which are still yeah as unreproduced bugs and all that and just revisit them try to figure out is this already implemented by chance is it already implemented by a plugin that i know of uh, sadly not all plugin authors uh, register their plugins with uh, with the plugin repository but um, yeah for those that i know of i will also utilize that information and, and close those tickets with with a hint at the um at the plugin in question and uh, that will hopefully make uh, or provide a good base for finally uh, getting some prioritization on all those tickets going so this is also by the way something where you can already help me if you want <laughs> as usual um because um Right now, I cannot do that stuff yet because I still have to do the 1 to 18 and 1.3.0 uh, stuff and everything that comes with it and and, and all that. But um, you can always not not only now with this with the spring cleaning uh, going to be soon started, but but always uh, if you if you see a feature request on Octoprint or you see a bug ticket on, on Octoprint and all of that. And if that somehow rings a bell like, ah, I've seen that before or this is already working or something like that, just write a comment in the ticket because this helps me so, so much. If I see that someone said uh, if, if that someone already found this this ticket to be basically obsolete, um, then it, it makes it way easier for me to just close it or at the very least take this as an additional data point if it's a bug or something like that that uh, I can get rid of it um, so if you want to help me a bit with preparing the spring cleaning uh, right now what you could do is basically um, uh, go through all those tickets or at least those that interest you or something like that and take a look at um, what is in there or if, it, if it's already implemented and all that and just leave me a comment there. And there is also something that uh, I would that would help me a lot. Um, and I'm going to quickly switch you over. I hope at least um, to my to my second screen. I hope you are seeing that now. So um, I don't know how familiar you are with the GitHub bug tracking uh, system, but 
what they introduced a couple of months ago is something that you find here at your reaction with this little smiley thing and the plus symbol next to it. And what you can do here is basically add a plus one or a minus one. And of course, a bunch of other stuff, but would, would be what would, would ugh, I'm sorry, I'm stumbling over my own tongue here. Um, probably because I have to wake up at 7.30 on a Sunday. Thanks, Robert. Um, I, what you can do here is add plus one and minus one. And this is what I am going to hopefully be able to use for um, feature prioritization. So if when you go through, Octo, for, through Octoprint's issue tracker and you find a feature that you really, really want, please do not add a comment to it that just says plus one. Instead, on the first post of that feature, click that button. And if you think a feature is completely and utterly stupid, a feature request rather, and you think that it, it, it should never be added because for whatever reason, uh, then, then please click that button. Um, because this will probably be uh, what I will be using when I finally get around to, to prioritizing this stuff and allowing you guys to vote on this kind of stuff. Um, I might have to code up a little front end for that because, um, yeah, right now having to, to wade through all those issues, uh, oops, sorry, uh, through all those issues in order to um, just find those, those uh, yeah, those reaction button thingies is a bit awkward maybe, but I'm, I have to have, have to take a strong look at that. But for now, if you stumble across any feature requests that you like, use those reactions on the first comment or rather on the initial post of the feature request. This um, will guide me or, or provide guidance at least a lot uh, with regards to what kind of stuff is what you want, what, what you want to see implemented and, and help me and decide how to structure my time basically and what to go, uh, put into 140. Um, speaking of 140, um, this is something that I, as I said, that I will not be able to get, get started on until I get this, uh, this, this issue chaos solved a bit, but, um, yeah, this is of course what is going to be what I tackle after that. So thinking about what will go in this and, um, there are a couple of things like a restructuring of the communication layer, which have been burning a hole in my pocket now for. I have to actually say years, I just realized because I first first started working on um, changing this this mess that is the current communication layer uh, about two years ago. And this is something I really, really want to have in 1.4.0 finally. I initially wanted it in 1.3.0, but it was just huge of an endeavor. So this is something that will go in 1.4.0 and then also, of course, whatever you guys want. and. Um, also, if I see something again, like the safe mode problem or, or something that will help a lot of people and also make my life easier, um, then I will probably also get that on track. Um, and of course, before I hear anyone screaming here, um, I said it the last time too, once I have 130 finally out of the door, I will also look into uh, how I get, uh, how I could get stuff like uh, coding tutorials and other kind of educational content going. So basically showing you um, how to use Octoprint, how to modify Octoprint, how to customize Octoprint by coding your own plugins. And uh, I hope that this will um, help a lot of you guys to to get the most out of out of your setups and, and also actually to maybe even uh, yeah, have you take your first steps in, in, in coding because it's not that tricky to add, add small stuff and that can only uh, already be a, a huge improvement depending on what you want to achieve. All right, so now um, that was uh, uh, the future plans of what I'm, uh, what, what I'm looking at after 1.3.0 and all that. Um, so, so now let's get to the Q and A part. And uh, yeah, uh, thankfully there were already a lot of questions this time that I can fall back on answering here. Um, but as usual, uh, please also ask uh, whatever comes to your mind now <laughs> in the in the live chat. I will take a look there. 
uh, intermittently, and I will ask, uh, I will answer those, of course, as well. Um, okay, so the first question is, uh, I have experienced some disconnects during print, and this causes the printer to stop printing, but leaves the heat bed and hot end on. Are there any safety features that can be implemented via the software to prevent this condition? So the problem here is that, of course, um, if Octoprint loses the connection to the printer, Octoprint cannot talk to the printer. I, I think this is pretty much self-evident. So the, th the thing here is that if this connection goes down for whatever reason, and usually that will be stuff like unrecoverable, unrecoverable errors from the, from the firmware, reported by the firmware, or stuff like um, uh, yeah, stuff like where the, the serial connection basically breaks away from underneath Octoprint. So, for example, when something is flaky with the cable or when um, what I've also seen is when people, for whatever reason, manage to access the printer device from two different programs. So one's from Octoprint and also they try something on the Linux console or stuff like that. So basically when, when Pi Serial, which is the communication layer, uh, the communication transport thingy that Octoprint uses to talk to the printer over the serial connection. When that throws an error, then everything just breaks down and I have no way to recover from that. Um, so I also cannot send something like an emergency shut off everything code to the printer before the connection breaks down because I only know that it broke down when it already broke down and then it's too late. Um, what would be really nice, but this is not, not something sadly that I in Octoprint can do, but this would have to be done by, by the people maintaining the firmware packages out there, is um, something like, like basically a kind of, of dead man switch. So I know that, that firm, I mean, firmware can see when a command is received over serial. So it would be nice if uh, there would be some way to automatically once such a command was received, if the firmware switched in some kind of, if I do not see another command within, I don't know, 20 seconds or nah, maybe not 20 seconds, but let's say if I do not see another command within the next two or three minutes, then something is wrong or the printer disconnected, uh, the, the host system disconnected, and then I'll just shut down everything. Um, or at least the heaters. I mean, the, the motors can still be engaged, but at least the heaters probably should be off then, unless it's printing from SD or something. But I'm not aware that any firmware uh, implemented that so far. It would be nice though, because yeah, I, I've also ha had this happen to me in the past when I still had some, some flaky cabling and all that. And the, the, sometimes the, yeah, sometimes the printer connection just dropped out. I also, back in the early, early days, I still had, an, I still had, uh, had, had issues with with a with a wonky Raspberry Pi uh, USB bus um, kernel module thingy stuff, there there was, were still some issues back in 2013 or something, and that made the made made one of my Pi's at least the one on my printer sadly uh, crash after three or four four hours, but not re not not reproducibly, but it happened, and then the printer just sat there with the hot end on full power and no way to access it anymore because it was not just a simple disconnect, the whole Pi was down and that was not fun. So I know this kind of thing and back then I already wished that phone would have some kind of watchdog, but um, yeah, I don't know, maybe I'm also not aware of, of, of such of features like that, but yeah, Robert just said in the in the live chat that Repetier does that as a timeout setting. That's good. Um, I don't know though, is this ex enabled by default? Because yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. So I know that I, I, I think at least that Marlin does not have something like that. And of course, considering the, the whole firmware situation on the market with yeah, the vendors forking off firmware, then never updating their forks and uh, also users rarely, I mean, yeah, usual or, or very, very mainstream users rarely updating the printer firmware, getting stuff like that out on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a huge scale would also be something that isn't completely difficult and, and yeah, probably not going to happen soon. Uh, well, yeah. 
So, um, bad for that. So I, I cannot do anything from Octoprint if the connection drops down because the only way that I can talk to the printer is through the connection. If it's if it's gone, well, too bad. Um, uh, Mark just suggested that it would be nice to have something like a plug-in to send email and communication error to notify user, and this is something that would be perfectly possible. So I know that there is an there is an email plugin already. I don't know if it does that. Um, I could modify my own um, push bullet plugin to do that. That you get a push bullet message when uh, the connection went down. Uh, especially when it went down during printing, because then probably something is horribly wrong. Uh, but um, sorry, um, but uh, that that was the live chat again, distracting a bit. Um, uh, if the uh, I've lost my thread of thought. Give me a second, please, to recover. Um, yeah, so. When the connection is gone, the only way that the, the only one that can engage safety features is the firmware itself. So, yeah. Please, firmware, uh, firmware developers who have not yet added stuff like that, please add it. Thanks. Um, next question Is there an easy way to restart a print midstream to keep from losing time and materials? So, I, I already mentioned the, the thing that I added now in 130RC2, which will. Uh, yeah, which will basically uh, on a pause and also on a cancel. So if you press the cancel button, persist all this data. Uh, the problem is that uh, if you lose the connection to the printer, there is no way to ask the printer where was your current print at, uh, where was your print at at the time of connection, because again, no connection, no way to talk to the printer. And um, you could now say, well, uh, you, you are sending all those commands. Uh, side note, I'm, I'm not sending them if I'm printing from SD, but let's leave this out of the of the uh, equation for now, uh, you could just track that that, that data. So, and, and this is where, yeah, where, where it's necessary to know a bit how the, the firmware is internally works. So when I send a move command to the printer, the printer will not immediately execute it, but instead it will put it into a buffer, which will be used by the firmware in order to plan ahead the next couple of moves. So how does it need to, to break down when it does a 90 degree angle or something like that and, and all that so forth for getting the proper acceleration curve? Um, the, the, the firmware will collect the next couple of end moves basically and then try to figure out from that how, to, how it has to accelerate and break and all that in order to get the best possible movement, uh, um, yeah, movement behavior out of that. So I sent the move command to the printer. The printer says, okay, I received your command, but that move command has not been executed by the printer yet. And I have no way to know when it will be. So if you send a, a very long move to the printer and then another very long move to the printer, it could be two or three minutes down the road when the printhead will be actually at the position of the last move, which I sent to the printer. And uh, I will never know that unless I ask the firmware, where is the printhead now? And uh, yeah, this is what I'm now doing in 130RC2. Um, but that of course only works if there is still a connection to the printer. So if everything breaks, there's no way to recover stuff. But um, what Octoprint will do if, for example, the, the firmware reports an error and all that is also that it now persists the current position in the G code file. And combining that with, and that could be done from a plugin, um, combining that with something like uh, querying the printhead position even on a fatal error and in the hopes that the connection to the printer is still there and we can still get that kind of information would allow to persist all that data and generate a, maybe basically something like a resume G code file from this data. So just moving the printhead back to the position it was before and then just continuing where we were after the failure. That of course depends on you not moving the printhead manually, uh, like without the steppers knowing I mean, or removing the print from the printhead. I mean, if it's gone, it's gone. Um, and uh, this is actually something that I already uh, built and uh, and and experimented with a lot for a client. Um, the only problem with that is that it's currently not something that is ready for the mainstream, so to say, because of all these limitations that I mentioned with the um, 
yeah, with the external, uh, with the with the SD card printing and the the multiple extruders and all that, and also because for that client at least, the situation is a very controlled one with regards to the possible failure scenarios and all that, where it's guaranteed that I still can get the position back from the printer, which if the printer disconnects, you can forget about. But this is something that I uh, will want to look in as re uh, for releasing as a separate plugin, so that you have something like a, yeah, a disaster recovery plugin, something like that. Um, okay, um, next question, uh, or rather a suggestion was by Martin, uh, who said that it might be interesting to, to, yeah, to offer something like, like pre-filled SD cards for sale. And uh, first of all, I already have t-shirts on my to-do list. <laughs> and uh, I also look into something like that if there is demand. In general, though, I have to admit that I try to prevent um, having to to dive into huge logistical uh, yeah overheads with with this so i'm good at software development and i think i can add the most value through that so uh while i i i am also talking to to vendors for for stuff like like uh, ready made kits and all that and there are also some uh, there are already one is one is offered by waterrod and there will be another one soon uh, where I'm, where I'm actually getting some, some, some of the profits back. So you, by buying stuff like that, you would basically be supporting my work too. Um, yeah, while I'm looking into that, I try not to make it my main focus, if you understand. So I promise I will look into, the, into, into things like that and continue to look into things. So please keep the ideas coming. Just do not expect me to immediately jump on them, drop everything and start uh, looking into, into merchandise because I, I, that would be unfair to you, I think. Um, another suggestion was by, by John. Uh, a monthly update on this is what's wrong now or I need some help with this next. So I, I like this idea. So as part of these, of these, of these hangouts here that I basically tell you what, what the current challenges are and where you can help. And uh, right now, the current challenges are the upcoming upcoming um, spring cleaning on the issue tracker. So please help there. <laughs> and for future episodes, I'll, uh, I'll keep this in, in the back of my head and try to remember telling you if, if there is anything that you can help me with uh, to tell you. Then another question by uh, Christian. Sometimes I need to do some manual change in the G code or just check it, but I cannot do that once the code is uploaded to Octoprint. Do you plan to put a G code viewer and editor into that? So this is not something that is currently on my immediate agenda, uh, but it has been in the issue tracker for ages. Uh, and I actually looked up the tickets. It's number 231, which shows you how long it's it's been one of the requested features. Um, it's uh, something that would be easily doable via a plugin, actually, and I'm thinking this might maybe even be a huge candidate, a good candidate for uh, for the tutorial uh, stuff that I um, said I wanted to do. So I look into maybe doing it that way, and uh, that would then uh, actually take care of two words with one stone because on the one hand you would have the plugin that allows you to edit and, and view your actual g-code text and on the other side I uh, would have this tutorial stuff uh, finally on the road. Um, so let's see about that. Then another question by Christian. Uh, Sometimes Octoprint says see an Octoprint log but I can't see the log. Can you add a log viewer so like this is uh, so, so that uh, with a browser we can see the log easily. So. This is yeah something that would probably make sense, but um, I nevertheless want to quickly show you something in uh, yeah in Octoprint which is possible right now. Let me quickly switch there. Okay, I think I have it. Um, because I'm not sure that you are aware of that. A lot of people manage to miss this because it's a bit hidden, and this is not where I wanted to go. There is under settings. There is this locks tab. Um, and there you have access to all the logs. You cannot view them here, but you can download them. And um, that would that is also the best way, basically, if you if you are re if you are opening a, a, a bug uh, ticket to get them, because yeah, this is where they are. Um, I should 
probably look into adding another button of viewing that stuff here and then have it open a little, a little text box kind of thing where you can just copy all the contents out of. I'll think about it. Um, or maybe someone of you wants, wants to. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is how this works. Um, back to me, back to me. Yeah, back to me. Um, so then Robert, I think, uh, asked, uh, performance. Is there any plan to improve the app performance? Is it somehow measured and monitored now? So I'm assuming you're talking about the, the bundled web interface, basically how fast this reacts and how fast it loads up and all that. And uh, I did a lot of improvements there in, in 1.3.0 already, added caching for a lot of API endpoints, which so far were not cached at all and allowed the browser to cache a lot of stuff as well that so far was not allowed to cache. And uh, this has, at least for me, this has made the UI significantly faster to load up. And um, the problem here is that, I mean, we have a very, very complex web page here with uh, lots of components that have to be put in there in the HTML, I mean, and uh, that also come from, from a bunch of plugins. So this is something that on a Pi takes time. And this is also why I added a, a lot of caching here. And um, this, this caching is also, I, I don't know if you've seen this in the log file, there's something like a preliminary cache, which is how I called it. But Octoprint will basically remember how you accessed it through which URLs. And then when you start up the server, Octoprint will iterate over this list in the order of most used, basically, and um, pre-cache this these uh, these these pages so that when you then access Octoprint after this cache has been filled, basically, it will be blazingly fast. The only problem is that this preliminary cache uh, filling takes, of course, as long as accessing the page usually. And uh, so if you if you boot up the server and immediately try to access the, the front end, then stuff will be slow. And um, just because it cannot utilize the cache yet and has to render it for the first time. If then you reload after that, it will be fast again, but this is something that I will not be able to prevent. And I also do not want to prevent people from accessing the page directly while the cache is still filling. Because, yeah, I mean, there might be a reason that you want to immediately access it now and not wait a bit longer. And it might be a bit faster if you access it directly instead of waiting for the preliminary cache. Yeah, so. Currently, I have to admit that I cannot think of a way to improve all that, yeah, all that speed on the APIs and the rendering and all that further um, without, yeah, without basically losing the plugin system because this is something that caused a huge performance uh, impact and triggered me adding loads of caching. And um, some plugins uh, are actually also something you should look at here because I know of at least one uh, plugin and I can't remember right now which one it was, which caused uh, significant slowdowns for people. So if you're a plugin author, uh, maybe also make sure when you're developing stuff that your 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 RP calls are cache cacheable and are not taking too much time and all that. Um, with regards to performance testing, um, well, basically I eat my own dog food. I use Octoprint pretty daily and uh, it's, yeah, and, and when I do that, it's running on a Pi. Um, when I break something and something slows down significantly, I usually notice this quiet fast. So um, I also, usually have when during work when I'm developing I also have the developer console open and look at how the timing of the page behaves and all of that and I try to um, yeah I'm trying to try to optimize that there is I think there's still one ticket open regarding the order in which some of the calls are done which could be still um, banging out some more speed out of the out of the initial page load and I'll also look into that after 130 um, but other than that, I'm a bit at a loss at what else to do. So if you have any ideas, please speak up and, and open a brainstorming ticket or something like that, because uh, that will also help me, of course. Um, okay, so 
this were the question, the first bunch of questions that I prepared to answer now. And then now let me take a quick look on to the live chat. Um, where did the name Octoprint come from? Is a question from Mark. Um, yeah, I, the, the the old page still still had a Google Plus thread uh, um, linked where that where that was explained. So basically, Octoprint was used to be called Printer Web UI, which is horribly creative, I know. And um, yeah, then then suddenly when it gained in popularity, I thought that was horrible, and I needed a new logo and a new name. And I started, basically, I started a, a thread on Google Plus asking the people using it, well, what should we do about that? And uh, a good friend of mine, Andreas Gore, who is um, the, lead main, uh, the lead developer on the DocuWiki project, said, well, just do it like me. Uh, usually when I'm looking for a project name, I just look for a cute uh, animal in, in, and then in parentheses, he added, uh, preferably with tentacles. And... Uh, and, 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 and use that. And then I think it was even my best friend who actually also designed the logo uh, already said something like, oh, I, I, I made this picture of a Kraken and posted this, this little, this very first proto Octoprint mascot, basically. And then Andreas said something like, yeah, well, uh, let's just call it Octoprint. And I was not, uh, Octoprint, no, I don't want to call it like that. And then everyone on the thread started like, yeah, Octoprint is a cool name. Octoprint is a cool name. And then and then my friend posted another picture of this little octopus, uh, yeah, basically cramped inside of a crystal ball. And I felt so bad for the little guy that I thought, okay, I, I think uh, now it's settled and it's going to be called Octoprint and I'm going to recruit this little octopus. And this is how that's, that happened. So it was not entirely, um, yeah, voluntarily on my part, but uh, I've, I've grown to really, really love the little guy and also the name. So I think it was a good decision. Um, Robert added uh, another... Uh, yeah, a follow-up basically on the performance question. The server performance is not a problem. The client is the problem. Type tab, tri try tablet or smartphone. Actually, I'm doing this a lot. I when I'm when I'm not sitting here and working and printing stuff over there, then I usually uh, use my smartphone to quickly take a look and um, I and or also my tablet. And I have to admit, I have not seen any issues. So. Um, that might be because I use a Nexus 9 and a Nexus 5X. I don't know. Um, I still have some oldish tablet here that I could give it a try on. I've also tested on an iPad and I did not see problems. I mean, of course, if you uh, have some huge SG code viewer file, uh, G code file in the viewer, which is also why it warns you about it, stuff will get slow. But in general, I've had the feeling that it was quite responsive there too in my own tests. So I did not feel anything amiss there. I don't know. All right. Um, also another question by, by Robert, while we are at live questions, uh, what's the advantage of working independently when you have to wake up at 7.30 on Sunday? I, I just have to say that I love you guys and I, I'm doing this for you. <laughs> I, because this morning was a situation of like, oh no, do I really? Why do I do this to me? But hey, it's it's okay. I mean, at least I can, uh, yeah, usually spend my Sunday morning sleeping. Um, by the way, uh, with regards to working independently and usual work times, I actually stick pretty much to my to my um, to my business uh, office hour stuff from before. I started working from home because yeah it's it's just more compatible to uh, to the general society stuff and also to 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 how my significant other works so that when he's out then I'm working and when he's back I'm not working basically and this way we we ha we somehow keep our lives in sync and have the weekends to spend together and stuff like that so I don't know a lot of people will probably I, I, or, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm also wearing pants, by the way, all the time. <laughs> I've actually had people ask me, like, now you're working from home all the time. Do you even bother, uh, like, dressing normally? And yeah, I do. I mean, it's 
when I go to the office, it's just like before, only the way got a bit shorter. And admittedly, I'm not dressing as much up as I did when I still had to go to the customer, which is a nice side effect, of course, because I feel way more comfortable wearing stuff like that. But yeah, so I've, I've not noticed a lot of advantage of working independently with regards to my usual office hours. Um, I think for now, that's all the questions from the from the live chat, I think. With a big thumbs up for the idea of, of, uh, of a tutorial for a G-code editor, hooray. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at the time. Yeah, um, we're basically, we've basically already filled our hour. I still would have had a couple of questions prepared from the, from the spreadsheet, but um, by the way, yay, please use it. This is working so much better than before. Uh, but I guess we'll just um, move them back a bit uh, to, for the next installation of this thing because I do not want to have this run way more than one hour. It might, I mean, people will not really watch it then, I think. Um, so let's maybe quickly talk about uh, the next installment of this broadcast thing. So um, first of all, the, the next time slot basically will be again something in the late afternoon my time so which would put it I think in the mid morning to noon um, over in the US and uh, late night on the Eastern Hemisphere. Um, I'm not completely sure yet if I will do the next one still before the holidays and New Year's and all that or if I will do it afterwards, because I don't know. I mean, I have, I know that I will have to take also care uh, of, of friends and family between the years, as we say in Germany, is usually when I um, get a lot of, get a lot of social visits and all that done. <laughs> and uh, I'm also looking forward to that part. And I don't know, you might have, might be in the same situation and then simply do not really have the time to um, attend any live broadcast. So, um, yeah, I, I actually might put up a vote uh, to figure out if it makes sense to schedule the next uh, broadcast still something like one month from now. So right between Christmas and, and New Year's or if this does not make much sense because nobody would have the time anyhow to attend. I'm not sure yet. I, I'll just put it to a vote and then we'll see if we'll just... Um, yeah, if we'll still see each other again in 2016 or if we'll have our no next broadcast, our next regular one in, uh, in, in early 2017. And uh, yeah, I think at least my, my big list of stuff to talk about is empty for now, apart from the questions that we'll tackle next time. Um, yeah, I I think that leaves me only with uh, a big hearted thank you for your attendance and um, I hope you, if, if, it's, if it's morning for you, I hope you have a pleasant day today and uh, if it's already evening or late night for you, I wish you a good night and a nice Sunday <laughs> and uh, I guess we'll see each other either in a month or in 2017 and uh, until then happy printing and uh, have a nice time and uh, keep on being awesome I guess <laughs> all right then uh, bye <laughs>